unlike my colleagues on the platform, I do not have an assignment for you. <laughs> However, I am going to introduce to you one of the finest members of our judiciary who will, in the course of the upcoming terms, have assignments for you. President Woolman, Judge Swab, I offer greetings to you. Judge Susan Swab, Weiner University Commonwealth Law School welcomes you to today's commencement ceremony. Before you became a United States Magistrate Judge of the United States District Court for the Middle District of Pennsylvania, you grew up in Wilkes-Barre, uh, one of three children, your parents Joseph, an electrical contractor, and Rosemary, a homemaker, instilled in you the values of hard work, sacrifice, and an importance of a strong education and the blessings of a family. As a youngster, you remember the devastation of the 1972 Hurricane Agnes flood, which left your family with only each other and the clothes on your back. But despite the circumstances, you learned from your, from your parents' examples that through perseverance and the love of family, faith, and community, it is possible to rebuild lives and dreams and turn an otherwise tragic situation into one that can create an enduring memory of a time of togetherness and hope for the future. You graduated from Wilkes University with a Bachelor of Arts in English Education and went on to teach English for two years, a very desirable and wonderful profession. And you had a successful career in sales as well before you decided to attend Widener University School of Law in Harrisburg. Your desire to earn a professional degree was fueled by the need to be intellectually challenged and to have an opportunity for advancement in your career. As a law student, you were a leader and you served as the internal editor of the Widener Journal of Public Law. You were a member of the law school's first incoming class and went on to become valedictorian, graduating summa cum laude in 1992. In your professional career, you have worked in private practice at the firm of Rhodes and Sinan in Harrisburg and Semenoff, Arnsby, Greensburg, and Torsha in Huntington Valley. In 2001, you left private practice and went on to serve 11 years with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. You were appointed Deputy Chief Counsel for the Pennsylvania Department of Auditor General and later for the Pennsylvania Treasury Department. You also served as Deputy State Treasurer for the Administration and for the Pennsylvania Treasury Department. Before your, before your appointment to the United States District Court, you served as Deputy Chief of Staff for Administration and Deputy Chief Counsel for the Democratic Caucus of Pennsylvania House of Representatives. In 2012, you were appointed United States Magistrate Judge of the United States Court for the Middle District of Pennsylvania. Your legal career has provided you with the greatest satisfaction at helping clients and the honor of serving the public. You are known for being a fair and impartial jurist with well-reasoned opinions. You have contributed to your alma mater and have served as a member of the Widener University School of Law Board of Overseers and as chair of the Widener University School of Law Diversity Advisory Board for the Harrisburg campus. We honor you as a thoughtful and determined woman who, as a wife to Matthew and as a mother to Wyatt, were also with us, who are also with us today, embodies the American dream of education, career, and family. We recognize you for giving back to the school that helped prepare you for your success. For these and many other reasons, Judge Susan Swab, Widener University Commonwealth Law School is pleased to award you the degree of Doctor Laws Honoris Causa. Under the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and the trustees of Widener University, I confer upon you, Susan E. Schwab, the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa, 
with all the rights, privileges, and immunities pertaining thereto. Thank you. Okay, thank you. President Woolman and Provost Wilhite, thank you very much. And Granger, we know each other a long time, and I couldn't have thought of anybody better to have uh, done that address. Thank you very much. I'm humbled to be here today. Good morning. Thank you to Dean Johnson, President Woolman, Provost Wilhite, Professor Dean, Chairman Bowman, other distinguished guests, family and friends, and especially you. It's hard to see you guys for the lights. Especially you, the 2016 class of Widener University Commonwealth Law School. To the class of 2016, I am truly honored to be here today to celebrate and witness one of the most memorable days of your lives. I am humbled to be a part of the conclusion of this journey and the beginning of your new path. To the families and friends of these graduates, thank you for letting me share in this day of pride and joy. I know that as much as these students have toiled throughout these years, you, their loved ones, have worked right along with them. You have given them confidence before they took their exams. Maybe you even helped quiz them on various legal subjects, such as the elements of a battery or the rule against perpetuities, uh, to the extent anyone really knows what the rule against perpetuities is. And I am sure many of you have put up with their newfound knowledge about how courtroom dramas such as Law and Order are not exactly accurate, or why L in Legally Blonde would never be allowed to conduct a cross-examination at a trial, uh, even one involving perms and what happens when you shower after getting one. 24 years ago, I graduated from the inaugural class of Widener Law's Harrisburg campus. I stood in this exact spot and delivered the commencement address for our class. It seems like yesterday that we were here, under the stars of this magnificent hall, surrounded by our family and friends, excited and exhausted to be finished with law school, anxious about the impending bar exam, and a bit nervous about what our careers may hold for us. Now, 24 years later, my guess is that two things haven't changed. You all feel the same as we did, and those of us who had started at Widener all of those years ago, including Professors Deem, Lee, Lockhart, Fruth, Kearney, Gedded, and Power, well, we have not aged one bit. <laughs> As I look back on my journey that began 24 years ago, I am reminded about how graduating from Widener Law School shaped and enhanced my legal career and the careers of so many of my classmates. Indeed, my experiences at this law school, including the relationships I forged with the professors and members of the school's community, have allowed me to thrive in the legal profession. The same is true with respect to so many of my classmates, and I think Jonathan Koltash alluded to that. Uh, I, I'm reminded, though, of the classmates of the inaugural class of whom I am so proud. For example, fellow classmate George Zanuck is now the president judge of Huntington County Court of Common Pleas, taking the bench after serving as Huntington County's district attorney for several years. Fellow classmate Irene Bezozo serves at the, as the prothonotary of the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. And fellow classmate William Nettles has risen to become the United States Attorney for the District of South Carolina. These are just a few examples of what in our inaugural class went on to accomplish and what Widener graduates accomplish. 
I am confident that all of you joining our ranks as Widener Law graduates today will continue moving this banner forward. In that effort, I want to impart three short but what I hope to be valuable lessons to you. You will spend the rest of your professional careers listening to judges. Hopefully, you will listen to judges. So I have kept my list brief. In preparing for today's uh, address, I scoured the internet for examples of commencement speeches. And what I found was that many commencement speakers urged their graduates never to quit. So here's the first lesson. As I think about the demands of the legal profession, I am struck by how much in the law, while one should never quit, truly effective legal counsel must sometimes stand still and take a step back. The attorneys for whom I have held great respect have always taken the opportunity to stop and contemplate the past, assess the present, and consider the future before moving forward. Too often, we are concerned about what is next and charge ahead with blistering speed, often resulting in unanticipated consequences. I have also found, perhaps with the benefit of hindsight, that this lesson of reasoned and meaningful contemplation applies not only how we counsel our clients, but how we navigate our careers. After I had made partner at Rhodes and Sinan, I learned that now Senator Bob Casey had an opening in the Auditor General's office for a Deputy Chief Counsel. My husband and I had recently moved, I had recently been recovering from breast cancer, and we had recently had a new baby. I had been doing litigation, and it struck us that making a career move for me to state government, while perhaps resulting in a salary decrease, may just what, be what we needed to achieve some balance. So I applied, and I got the job. And for a while, it was exactly what I needed, a welcome change of pace that gave me a meaningful opportunity to serve the citizens of the Commonwealth. But it also turned out to be a pivotal step in my personal journey because for the next 11 years, I went on to serve in the Pennsylvania Treasury Department, in the Auditor General's office, and in the state legislature. And without that robust uh, public service experience, it is less likely that I would be where I am today. So that is the first lesson. Never quit, but take the time you need before taking your next step. The second theme I found the commencement speakers typically mention is urging graduates to go forth and change the world. Now that's a pretty big task, and I'm not so sure you all are prepared to do that today. Because you have a lot more learning to do, and I urge you to never stop learning. You may be finishing law school today, but in selecting law as your chosen field, you are embarking on a path that demands a commitment to lifelong learning. The mystery of the law is that it is always changing, always evolving. In other words, the law is constantly teaching, so you must be constantly learning it. To be sure, you are the generation that will learn about the law and the world through the use of technology. Thus, as you move forward in your careers, embrace technology and all of the efficiencies it brings to our world and our profession. But let me also mention an important caveat that grows more important every day. Although technology has made the legal world more efficient, please do not hide behind it. Remember that much of the business of law is still done on paper and in person. In many ways, we still deliver legal services and unfortunately legal opinions, in the same manner as Chief Justice John Marshall did when he wrote Marbury versus Madison in 1803. The federal courts are only now just talking about doing away with word perfect. <laughs> Many judges are against it. Believe it or not, it is okay to speak on the phone rather than emailing or texting. 
and after seeing some of the emails that lawyers append to various motions, I would say they should have picked up the phone rather than put whatever they are saying in writing. It is okay to discuss a matter in person. Do not lose a personal touch in developing your legal skills. I would, however, advise against Snapchatting judges because uh, I don't even think they know what it is. And so the second lesson is never stop learning. Because while you may go out and change the entire world, well, you may not go out and change the entire world, you're going to create profound changes in your clients' lives and in turn your own. And finally, the third lesson. Commencement speeches are filled with words that urge graduates to look to a bright future. And each of you does have a bright future, just waiting to be created. Today, however, rather than looking to your bright future, I'm going to ask all of you and everyone here to look up to the dark sky. I mean it. Take a minute and look up. This stunning art mural was designed and dedicated in 1931. The ceiling represents the constellations of the Northern Hemisphere. And with relative accuracy, it shows the position of a thousand stars. Look around the mural and you will see the names and pictures of these constellations and major stars. In the center of the ceiling is an elliptical metal sculpture that represents the Ptolemaic, the Copernican, and the Keplerian theories of the movements of the planets. Now, I know nothing about the movements of the planets. I'm thinking maybe Professor Lee does, though. But what I do know is that, in a way, your time in law school is like being inside this building. Today, you can look up in the ceiling and see the various stars and read exactly what each constellation and figure depicts. In law school, your professors have given you countless cases, statutes, and treatises so that you can learn what the law means. But when you leave this building today and you look up, you will only see the sky. The stars that are so clearly visible here will be diffused by daylight and clouds. You will have to find those stars on your own. And so this is my third lesson. The law is challenging, and although you may not be able to look up and find the answers as easily as you may have done in law school, trust in the skills you have learned. You are prepared for the practice of law. You know how to analyze and how to persuade. If you trust in your education and you exude confidence, I know that all of you will be able to find the stars in whatever constellation you choose. Thank you for letting me share this day with you. It is an honor, and I wish you all of the best. God bless you.